The 1890s was a time of change, a time of growth and new ideas. It saw the end of the isolationist view held by the government of the United States. The United States was at that time involved in the Spanish-American War, which uh, was mainly in Cuba, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, and also they were involved in the Boxer Rebellion in China. The, the 1890s saw major technological achievements also. The vacuum cleaner, roll film, escalators, um, just to name a few, and also the airships. The 1898 uh, was the start of the flying saucer era. One of the reports made by made at the high point in the sightings was made by one Professor Cross, Dean of the University of the Pacific. Cross easily ruled out a balloon or a blimp. Cross was one of the most famous scholars and linguists in the United States at the time. It was around seven o'clock on Thursday evening when my attention was called to the strange light in the air. I was visiting at the residence of Professor Worcester and was called into the yard by him to view the airship. Whether or not it was an airship, of course, I am not prepared to say, but certainly there was a rapidly moving light in the heavens. Far too big and bright to be an electric street light. To my eye, it appeared to be about six inches in diameter. It was moving in a southwesterly direction and appeared at a high rate of speed. End quote. In the November 29th issue of the San Francisco Call, there's an article called Hearts and Vincer has three aerial flyers uh, was a detailed explanation of the airship phenomenon. The airships traveled against the air current also. The call interviewed a man that stated he was, he was uh, the inventor of the airships. The man stated that he didn't need money or anything. The climate of California was perfect, right? And it could be used to perfect the airships. The inventor gave all the credit of the success to California's wonderful climate. The airships were to be used to take to Havana, Cuba as soon as the airships were perfected. The man was of a dark complexion and stood about 5'7". He was a man of about 140 pounds. The inventor had three assistants to help him fly and, man and maintain the airships. The airships uh, used both electricity and gas. Shortly after the airships were perfected, they were to be flown to Havana to aid the United States in the Spanish-American War. Havana was to be bombed flat with dynamite thrown from the airship. But plans were changed and the airship reached Mars. And, well, that's what they say. The commercial Ideas Are Scary was a promo for General Electric. The commercial was directed by Noam Maru. So what do this commercial have to do with airships? The airships were improved and changed into the UFOs that people saw in the 40s and the 50s. The occupants changed from humans to strange creatures. These creatures were actually demons. Over the years, we have been conditioned to accept the uh, living with non-human creatures. Cartoons, movies, and beloved characters have been uh, aired in shows to prepare us for something far more sinister than what they say. When the devil and his angels will be cast down to earth and people will have to live alongside with these creatures.
This is related to a statement in the Book of the Giants. The, walker, the watchers took 200 donkeys, 200 sheep and rams, 200 goats for all types of miscegenation. <laughs> the story of the airships have been uh, definitely connected with the cult. Premier investigating scientist in the realm of UFO research. In his book, Messengers of Deception, Valet says, an impressive parallel can be made between UFO occupants and the popular conception of demons. And in his book, Confrontations, he writes, the medical examinations to which abductees are said to be subjected, often accompanied by sadistic sexual manipulation, is reminiscent of the medieval tales of encounters with demons. He also made this statement. Three years ago that I told him, my sister, before my wife came around, used to be leader of the state of Ohio, the high priestess there of the whole state. And her little pastime was calling up, supposedly filling the sky with UFOs and watching everybody's excitement. And some of the most outstanding sightings were in the early 70s in Ohio, and she used to laugh about it because she'd be standing in a circle out in the field somewhere calling up demons, and that's all they were, were angels of light playing games in the sky. Remember, a demon, get the little spooky picture, there are a fallen angel, an unclean spirit. They can assume any form or go into anything except a Christian who walks in the spirit all the time. 